the headlines for this hour, VTV News, cooperation between Vietnam and Japan in hand. Vietnam negotiate plastic pollution deal while ensuring national interest. In a war news, Germany tightened border controls for UFR Euro 2024. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello, it's 3 p.m. local time in Hanoi. You're watching VTV News. On Wednesday morning, National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ met with Fujimoto Masayoshi and Hyodo Masayuki, both are chairman of the Japan-Vietnam Economic Committee of the Japan Business Federation, Kia Dan Rent, and leaders of the Federation's major corporations. Chairman Vương Đình Huệ welcomed the co-chairman and expressed his appreciation for their visit to Vietnam. They came to attend the high-level meeting that initiated phase one of the Vietnam-Japan joint initiative in the new era. Chairman Vương Đình Huệ commented Kira Dan for its role in encouraging Japanese businesses to invest in Vietnam and offering policy recommendations to help Vietnam improve its institutions. He emphasized the National Assembly roles in developing the law and deciding on budget allocation. He noted that both the National Assembly and its committees will be involved early in the execution of these cooperation programs. He expressed confidence that with suitable resources and mechanisms, the effectiveness of cooperation programs between the two countries will certainly increase. The U.S. Department of Commerce has issued preliminary anti-subsidy duties on shrimp from Vietnam, India, and Ecuador. Specifically, shrimp from Vietnam will have a deposit requirement of 2.84% for Stapi Mix, 196.4% for Thong Thuận, and 2.84% for all other Vietnamese suppliers. The tax rate is expected to come into effect within the next few days. If investigators conclude that the importing countries are not guilty of providing illegal subsidies or if the subsidized imports do not harm the U.S. shrimp industry, the tax will be refunded. However, importers are likely to face the cost of tax deposit for exported shrimp for the majority of this year. In the first two months of the year, lobster export increased 18 times compared to the same period last year, netting nearly 30 million US dollars. This data was recently released by the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers. Despite facing many difficulties last year, lobster exports have shown a significant recovery. Many are wondering if this recovery momentum will continue in the coming months. There are two types of lobsters raised in the waters of the South Central Provinces, blue lobster and cotton lobster. Since the middle of last year, cotton lobsters have been deadlocked, after China included cotton lobsters in the list of endangered wildlife species that need protection. For blue lobster, export is still favorable. The type of blue lobster accounts for 75% of lobster production of about 4,000 tons per year in the South Central Provinces. The demand for blue lobster is high, customers are buying a lot. Problems in importing cotton lobster have been received and handled by China. It is expected that Vietnam's cotton lobster exports to the Chinese market will be considered under a special mechanism. While waiting for the opening of the cotton lobster export market, the South Central Provinces have begun to adjusting production outputs to adapt the market. The local farmers are closely following the market and gradually reducing the production of cotton lobsters to avoid damage to production when it cannot be exported. The market needs blue lobster, why not raise blue lobster for sale? The second, I think, the export floor must aim for sustainability and through official channels. Lobster farming is an important livelihood for the people of the South Central Provinces. Experience and techniques of lobster farming are available. Strictly following the market development is important to keep the recovery of lobster exports. 
according to Barry Vungtao province plan for 2021-2030 with a vision toward 2050. The province will continue to develop additional industrial parts and promote green industry, which can deeply integrate into global value chains. This serves as the foundation for Barry Vungtao to develop a sustainable economy. More to follow. In pursuit of a green industry, the Standing Committee of Bari Avungto Provincial Party Committee issued Directive 43. This clearly regulates eight types of projects that are not suitable for investment or should limit investment attraction. The province's direction is to focus on sustainable development, so we have chosen environmentally friendly projects, ensuring new, modern, and labor-intensive technology right from the start. From now until 2030, Barrio Avungto Province plans to establish high-tech and eco-industrial parks. In conjunction with urban areas, this will form expensive industrial service urban complexes. By 2030, the province aims to have 24 industrial parks with a total plant land area exceeding 16,000 hectares. Infrastructure development investors will optimize the efficiency of their businesses' infrastructure provision services. As for businesses in the industrial park, participating in the project will increase the added value and competitiveness of their business in the production process. The goal and vision of this specialized industrial park is to become a large-scale, modern industrial park and the most optimal investment location in Vietnam for investors. It aims to attract high-quality, large-scale foreign direct investment from abroad. Focusing on the development of smart industrial parks, Barrio Vungto aims to create a powerful push for sustainable industrial development. The goal is to increase the number of projects that incorporate modern production environmental protection practices to between 50 and 100 percent by 2030. Power plants would install capacity greater than 30 megawatts are responsible for completing registration procedures and can directly participate in the electric city market with those using renewable energy with installs capacity greater than 10 megawatts have the right to choose to directly participate in the market. These are new points in the draft circular regulating Vietnam's competitive wholesale electric city market. However, the question is how to ensure fairness and transparencies in mobilizing and regulating power sources. From 2019 until now, there have been 108 power plants directly participating in bidding on the competitive wholesale electricity market. According to assessments, this ratio is quite low compared to the total system capacity. An investor in electricity must make a profit, and the profit is based on two factors, price, and the maximum generated electricity output. However, we should pay attention to the level of investment risk. It's essential to have innovative thinking, which allows representatives of power plants to negotiate with final consumers. EVN is not the only electricity buyer. The requirement is to establish an equally competitive wholesale electricity market, as well as transparency in resource mobilization. The new regulations of the competitive wholesale electricity market indicate, for thermal power, the floor price is 1 VND per kilowatt hour, while the ceiling price is determined annually, adjusted monthly. For hydropower, the floor price is 0 VND per kilowatt hour, and ceiling price, determined weekly. We have adjusted the bidding cycle and the dispatching cycle reduces from 60 minutes to 30 minutes and increases the number of bidding pairs from 5 bidding pairs to 10 bidding pairs to better match the orientation of the direct electricity trading program. We will have to innovate the way of accounting in electricity production and in the entire electricity supply chain. In 2024, we will correctly and fully calculate production costs, as well as transmission and distribution prices. Thus, a transparent electricity mobilization price mechanism, ensuring market-based operations, will be effective solutions to attract investment in developing energy projects thereby ensuring both users and investors can gain benefit. On Wednesday afternoon, VN Direct Securities Company restore and deploy its trading system in four phases 
Customers regain access to their account status and could view their financials and stock data prior to the cyber attack. VN Direct advised customers to change their fat password immediately upon logging in. Earlier on the morning of March 24th, an international organization attacked VN Direct systems, rendering the entire trading platform inaccessible. The company expects its system to be fully operational again by 9 a.m. on Thursday. From the start of the year until March 20th, the state treasury raised over 2.9 billion US dollars through government bonds with terms ranging from 5 to 30 years. This amount constitutes approximately 57.3% of the issuing plan for the first quarter, according to the Vietnam Bond Market Association. Bonds with tenors of 10 and 15 years were issued the most valued at nearly 1.2 billion US dollars and 1 billion US dollars respectively. They represented over 75% of the total value seen the start of the year. Five-year bonds ranked third to accurate 600 million US dollars. During the final week of March, the state treasury plans to solicit bid for an additional 524 million US dollars in government bonds. The yield of these bonds has seen a slight upward trend. Specifically, the yield for 10 years and 15-year bonds are at 2.39% per annum and 2.59% per annum, respectively, while the five-year bond year saw a minor increase of four basis points to 1.47 per annum. And before moving on to some of the news, let's take a look at foreign exchange rate for today, March the 20th. Up next on BTV News, Vietnam negotiate plastic pollution deal while ensuring national interest. And youth actively safeguard rich heritage of traditional craft villages. The Department of Overseas Labor under the Ministry of Labor in Ballots and Social Affairs advised businesses with Vietnamese seafarers abroad transport ships to avoid or temporarily halt operations through the Middle East, Africa maritime routes, particularly the Red Sea. This is due to the recent surge in tensions in the Middle East, especially in waters near this region. To guarantee the security and safety of Vietnamese workers on international transport ships, the department urges businesses to promptly discuss the security risks and safety measures with partners and ship owners who employ Vietnamese workers on these maritime routes. The first global agreement on plastic pollution is anticipated to be finalized by the end of this year. The fourth round of negotiation is scheduled for April in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, this marks the first time that official member countries will collectively negotiate the contents of the agreement. Vietnam is maintaining a balance between participating in these negotiations and safeguarding the country's interest in the collective battles against plastic pollution. The third round of negotiations in November last year ended with dissent. The European Union required reducing the production of plastic goods and ending plastic pollution from 2040. And oil-producing countries such as Russia, China, Iran, and Saudi Arabia still want normal production, only controlled at the recycling stage. Vietnam has expressed the view that plastic pollution is very serious, but plastic is also a very important material of domestic production. We contribute to the global joint effort to reduce plastic pollution but also protect the rights and interests of Vietnamese plastic production enterprises in order to have room for development. The plastic industry is one of the industries with the highest growth in Vietnam with an annual increase of 16 to 18 percent per year. This agreement will bring certain challenges to the domestic plastic industry, especially for businesses in the single-use product group. They need to be prepared to change the production model. Balancing between the reality of domestic production and international obligations is not an easy problem. However, Vietnam has a basis to make harmonious proposals between these two issues. 
We recommend that there should be an exemption, that is, countries like us will be exempted, that will give us time to transit. We have a very large informal force in the field of waste, and if we can call on support from the international community for this informal sector, that would be good. All current products in Vietnam have plastic packaging. Therefore conversion route of this material must be carefully negotiated to avoid higher costs for consumers. The Mekong Delta is experiencing the peak dry seasons, drought and saline intrusion are widespread and expected to recur in subsequent years. Therefore, suitable solutions are urgently needed. How will localities and residents in this area coexist with drought and saltwater intrusions in the near future? Let's find out more in the following story. Saltwater intrusion arrived earlier and deeper during the dry season of 2023 to 2024 than the average of previous years. From December last year until now, several consecutive saltwater intrusion events have occurred, peaking in March this year. Some places may experience higher salinity levels than in 2016. We have conducted studies and informed people early. According to scientists, the total damage caused by drought and salinity in the Mekong Delta region is over 2.8 billion US dollars per year. Therefore, instead of trying to combat drought and salinity, experts suggest that people and localities in the Mekong Delta region should adapt and coexist with these phenomena. If the saltwater intrusion in 2016 is a once in a hundred years, then in the past 10 years, there have been three severe saltwater intrusion events. So we must adapt and coexist with salinity. That is a prerequisite for the Mekong Delta. Even if we build salt barriers, we may inadvertently disrupt the freshwater ecosystem. Because outside the barriers is saltwater, inside is freshwater. And that freshwater is polluted by concentrated pesticides, fertilizers. The flow then is blocked. Resolution 120 of the Government on Sustainable Development of the Mekong Delta points out that regional development must respect natural laws and avoid aggressive interference with nature. Localities should adopt environmentally friendly adaptation models to actively respond to floods, inundation, and saltwater intrusion. Currently, 24 poor and near-poor households reside in the hamlet next to Cát Tiên National Park, Tân Phú District, Đồng Nai Province. Their reliance on forest products for survival due to low income and inefficient agriculture places significant pressure on the national park. For long-term forest protection, sustainable solutions that ensure the livelihoods of these residents are crucial. This family is one of 24 impoverished households in Hamlet 7. They live in a 20 square meter makeshift house at the end of the hamlet. The man of the house, previously fined for hunting wild animals in the park, has since turned to farming. The family's 3,000 square meter rice field is their sole source of sustenance, but it's insufficient for the four of them. We graze cows near the forest, without barns. We harvest only a few tons of rice a year, which yields insufficient income. Aside from rice farming, residents of this hamlet also relied on secondary forest products. Their primary source of income, the rice crop, yields low returns. Cashew nut crops often fail due to the absence of an irrigation system. We lost our entire crop when the weather was intensely hot. This year, we yielded only two harvests. Each 1,000 square meter rice field of fruitful harvest can yield 5 to 5.5 quintals, bringing in approximately 80 to 100 US dollars. Farmers earn very little and cannot escape poverty. This commune shares a 13 kilometer border with the national park, creating substantial pressure from people entering the forests. To mitigate these forest violations, Poor households are encouraged to raise livestock and participate in forest protection. There is a project to mobilize $605 for six poor households. The locals have capital to enhance their farming and renovate barns, thereby improving their lives and relieving pressure on the forests.
the commune now has newly built roads for convenience, but the water system is not yet in place. The lack of water poses many challenges for local residents in their efforts to overcome poverty. On Wednesday night, the 18th Contribution Award Ceremony was held at the Hanoi Opera House. The 15 contribution trophies recognize and honor talented individuals who have continually striven for advancement in the country's music and sport industries. This marked the second year that awards were given in both the music and sport categories. Notably, swimmer Nguyen Hui Huang was presented with the Sport Face of the Year Award. In the music categories, rapper Dan Bo won two awards, Music Video of the Year for Cook For You and Male Singer of the Year. The award for Female Singer of the Year went to Huang Minzi. Rapper Double Two T was another duo award recipient, taking home New Artist of the Year and Song of the Year. Amidst the backdrops of robust international cultural integrations, there are concerns that young people will adhere to modern trends, neglecting traditional cultural values. And despite this, one young individual has launched a creative project to introduce products that are inspired by and rooted in cultural traditions. Ngo Quy Duc, born and raised in the suburbs of Hanoi, chose to celebrate his childhood memories of the countryside by working to rejuvenate traditional craft villages. Since 2006, he has established an online library focused on Hanoi's culture and history and has initiated tour programs for craft villages. Since I was a child, I have known about various handicraft products such as Hang Chong and Dong Ho paintings, as well as bamboo and rattan tables and chairs. Duke left his job as an information technology engineer to concentrate on his research in traditional craft villages. After 15 years, he launched the Back to Village project in 2020. His online library introduces and connects over 100 craft villages nationwide and also links these villages with businesses and the public. Duke traveled to my craft village several times. He even stayed up all night to stoke the kiln with the pottery factory workers to understand the hardships of the craft. He later shared this experience and introduced craft products to friends both domestically and internationally. My goal is to enhance the finest quality of each product so that they can further promote Vietnamese craftsmanship and products to the world market. We can be proud of the well-preserved qualities of our ancestors. The Back to Village project introduces experiential activities in craft villages. This initiative promotes the cultural values of these areas, bringing benefits to the villagers. This sustainable approach has revitalized traditional craft villages and contributes to the preservation and enhancement of their beautiful values. Coming up next in our war news, Germany tightens border controls for Euro 2024. And 95 people still missing after Moscow attacked. Germany plans to enhance border controls for the European Football Championship 2024. This decision, as stated by the German Interior Ministers, aims to ensure safety during this significant international sport event amidst potential terrorist threats. Recent terrorist attacks in Russia have heightened the security situation in Europe. Consequently, France, the host country for the Summer Olympics, has elevated its security alert to the highest level. Euro 2024 is scheduled to start on June 14, with matches occur across Germany until July 14. Up to 95 people remain unaccounted for following last week attacked at the suburban Moscow Concert Hall, according to Russian emergency services. This list comprises individuals who haven't been in contact with their families in the terrorist attack and were not included on the list of the injured or deceased. As of now, the tragedy has been confirmed to have resulted in 140 deaths and 360 injuries. 
Authorities are urgently searching for those missing. Representatives of member states in European Special Committee on Agriculture have endorsed a targeted review of certain fundamental phases of the Common Agriculture Policy, or CAP. This is a response to the concern raised by farmers. Farmers have expressed their struggles with pressure arising from climate change, increasing costs and inflation. These challenges make the economic impact of certain CAP elements an unjust burden to bear. As a result, the Commission has decided to review the CAP to strike a better balance between environmental and climate ambitions while also addressing farmers' concerns. The CAP has been in place for over 60 years. To receive subsidies, farmers must ensure their practices do not harm the environment. Thailand's lower house of parliament on Wednesday passed a marriage equality bill at the final reading. This landmark step moves the country closer to becoming the third in Asia to legalize same-sex unions. More to follow. The bill had the support of all of Thailand's major parties and was passed by 400 of the 415 lawmakers present, with 10 voting against it. One of the 400 parliamentarians supporting the bill had pressed the wrong button, leading to the screen showing 399 in favor initially. The parliamentary meeting has approved to pass the Civil and Commercial Code Amendment Act. The bill now requires approval from the Senate and endorsement from the King before it becomes law. Many people around me are LGBTQ. Everyone wants this bill to pass because they want to be able to marry just like everyone else. I am pleased that marriage equality legislation has passed, and I hope it will be implemented because it will likely benefit many people. The passing of the bill marks a significant step toward cementing Thailand's position as one of Asia's most liberal societies on lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender issues. And now as usual, let's continue with the weather forecast. And that's all the news for today. To rewatch our program, you can log on to vtvgo.vn or download a mobile application VTVGO. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.